was Luka Doncic so mad after this play by Andrew Wiggins? Goes by Bullock! Oh! Drops the sledgehammer! Short answer, a combination of embarrassment and a feeling of helplessness. Luka will get his revenge on another team in this video, but as for now, our eighth example of trash talk gone wrong comes in the 2002 Western Conference Finals when in Game 2, Luka would score 24 points in the first half and give the Mavs a 14-point lead on a near logo 3 when everything went wrong. First, Luka got into it with a fan heading into halftime after his big shot. <laughs> And then, by the fourth quarter of this game, the Mavs had crumbled and only held a two-point lead, which led to Luka saying this on his own bench. Are you okay? Dallas would never recover from this, as in this fourth quarter, Golden State annihilated them, outscoring them by 11 points, and Steph even hit the Mavs with a night-night celebration after connecting on a dagger three. And this led to a game three where Luka tried to get even with Steph with his own version of a shimmy. <laughs> Unfortunately, after this shimmy came Andrew Wiggins' dunk in Luka's face, and what followed was another Mavericks loss. And at this point, Luka had lost it. Down 3-0, Luka would tell Steph... <laughs> and then he would get on Klay Thompson's nerves after bullying Moses Moody right here. When this was all said and done, Luka would shoot 10 for 28 with a box score plus minus of minus 12 in a 10 point game five elimination loss as the Warriors took this series four to one and went on to win the NBA championship. Most of this video is a player's own trash talk backfiring on them. Although in the first round of the 2021 playoffs, the Knicks fresh off a seven year playoff drought were ready to make their mark when their fans got a little bit too excited and showered Trey Young with extreme hate to begin game one. Well, they're psyched to be back in the postseason. An obscene anti Trey Young chant. Trey welcomed these chants and seemingly found energy playing the villain role, as he would not only score 32 points with 10 assists and 7 rebounds in this game one, but also this is how the first game ended. Here is Young. Finds his spot. Young on the floater puts it in. Trey Young with a miraculous shot. To say Knicks fans lost their minds after this combination of shot and trash talk would be putting it mildly, as yes, it was very quiet in that building at that moment, but in game two, the Knicks momentarily did get their own revenge as they did take a win. However, they would also hit Trey with even more chance. <laughs> the minute 13 is with a wry smile. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. With basketball season starting to heat up, it is time to turn our attention to the sport that matters the most, and I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook to hook you guys up as throughout the playoffs, right now, all new customers who bet $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. If you've already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can get a no sweat bet. That means you get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay does not hit max reward limits apply and if sports betting is not yet available in your state do not worry you can still join in in all the fun with DraftKings daily fantasy so make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now new customers use promo code Corzemba and bet just five dollars on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly that is personally what I'll say just an incredible deal that's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook again thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video and for now let's get back into the video Knicks fans went as far as to spit on Trey. Only Gallinari's made a field goal in this fourth quarter. All of this only made things worse, as the Hawks would win both of their home games, which meant game five was an elimination game, and that is exactly what happened. An elimination, with Trey making sure he would live forever rent-free in Knicks fans' heads. And here comes the standing ovation yes. in appreciation of the Knicks season. 
as Young fires from away downtown and takes him out. Not appreciated. For this series, Trey averaged 29.2 points and 9.8 assists per game, and here was the Knicks fans' reactions after they were bounced. Suck my d Trey Young! Suck my d Trey Young! Yo, Trey Young looks like my dad's d You mother I'm gonna f you up! Trey Young's blown! They truly went out horribly. Meanwhile, Trey would proceed to lead the Hawks to the Eastern Conference Finals that season, and to this day, even after beating other teams like the 76ers in the 2024 playoffs, Knicks fans still swarm the streets chanting F Trey Young. He is continuing to live rent free. Moving on, looking at the 2016 NBA Finals, the Golden State Warriors were not only defending champions, they were also up 3 to 1 in this series after a Game 4 win. However, with LeBron James' legacy, on the line, things were about to take a serious turn for the worse. As in this game four, Draymond Green and LeBron got into the following exchange. Promote Green by a team. Curry had a notion there. The Barnes. Green and James joying at each other while play continues. They get down on the pull up. That won't go. And a double foul is going to be called. Remember, Draymond Green. Is one flagrant foul and two technicals away from being suspended. Because of this play, LeBron was given a technical, but Draymond was suspended for game five as he had accumulated too many flagrant fouls throughout the year due to dirty plays such as this one versus Steven Adams. Green putting a move on Adams, and he is fouled. And down goes Adams. It's the leg, guys. Watch the leg. Oh. The NBA would even directly say, while Green's actions in Game 4 do not merit a suspension as a standalone act, the number of flagrant points he earned triggers a suspension for Game 5. This was a highly controversial suspension at the time. However, this was also not where the trash talk took place. Instead, it was Klay Thompson who took the mic after the Game 4 win and said the following about LeBron. I mean, guys talk trash in this league all the time. I guess his feelings just got hurt. LeBron would respond directly to Klay's talk. What did you say? Clay said? Clay said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to take the high road. And then in game five, LeBron would respond on the court with 41 points, 16 rebounds, and seven assists. And at this point, Clay had awakened the beast. As now, with Draymond back in game six, LeBron was still on another level, scoring 41 points to go along with 11 assists and eight rebounds in another Cavaliers win, leading to a deciding game seven where we had an all time classic with LeBron giving us the signature play of his career. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! LeBron James with the rejection! Wow. This, of course, led to the signature play of Kyrie Irving's career, where he gave the Cavs a lead they'd never give up. Irving and Curry, one-on-one, -on -one. Irving puts it up, it's good! Kyrie Irving from downtown! Cleveland is a city of champions once again. LeBron even almost got the ultimate revenge on Draymond with what would have been the best poster dunk ever. Irving drives to James, misses the jam, but foul. Instead, Bron settled for bringing a title to Cleveland as the Warriors blowing a three to one series lead became an all time NBA meme. That was the result when a group of Hall of Famers trash talk LeBron. So what happens when a role player attempts to do the same thing? You can probably guess this isn't gonna be good. As headed into the 2023 playoffs, the Memphis Grizzlies were the two seed in the Western Conference, which meant they had to wait to see how the play-in games panned out before they knew who their first round opponent was. During this time period, when asked if he wanted to play LeBron, Dylan Brooks said he wouldn't mind playing LeBron in a seven game series. The legacy is there. First time back in the playoffs, knock them out right away. They'll test us good. They got good pieces, good players. They'll be a good first round matchup for us. This talk would plant the seeds for a wild series as the Lakers would take game one on the road and then in game two after a basket over Dylan Brooks LeBron got in Brooks face back in LeBron everybody stays at home and LeBron makes him pay 66 52 16 for James and some words exchange with Brooks walking the other way but then surprisingly it was Brooks who would knock down a clutch three that helped Memphis get the game to win and he let LeBron know it initially on this hit or you'll see it in a moment after the stare down by Brooks and LeBron just wouldn't return the favor. Brooks in the locker room would then double down on everything he had said. Maybe you shouldn't do that with one of the better players in the game. What, I guess what, what were you thinking? I don't care. He's old. <laughs> I poke bears. 
Um, I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. Wild statements from a role player, and this led to LeBron actually walking up to Brooks before game three and saying something. LeBron walking over to Brooks, having a very, I would say, characterize it as a low-key conversation, Doris. And then in game three, Brooks would get ejected for the following play. Stay aggressive, you know, uh, play together, you know, setting the ball. And All right, we have a whistle and a foul. And Dylan Brooks led the league with 18 technical fouls. He's been issued a flagrant foul penalty too and has been ejected from the game. Brooks had clearly ignited LeBron as in game four, Brown would finish off the Grizzlies with a clutch and one directly on Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks picks up James. He wanted James. He gets him. James drives. James is fouled. And the seventh seeded Lakers would end up taking this series in six games, which was already embarrassing for Dylan Brooks, but as if that was not enough, the Grizzlies after reported after this playoff series loss that they would not re-sign Dylan Brooks under any circumstances. Yikes. And if we rewind a bit, it would later come out that this feud actually may have started because back in 2021, LeBron would call Dylan Brooks too small after hitting several clutch shots in a game against Memphis. Late clock for the Lakers, leading by a point, LeBron backing down Brooks. Now James got the ball in his hands, the whole possession, and he'll stick another one. LeBron James. So essentially, LeBron has owned Dylan Brooks. And shockingly, this is not the only time on our list a player talked trash and ended up on a different team. As also in the 2023 playoffs, the Boston Celtics were looking to return to the NBA Finals and take the next step until Grant Williams poked the bear. As already trailing 1-0 in this series, Grant hit what should have been a massive three for Boston, only double and trapped. Grant Williams three. Good for him. And now he's having words in the ear girl, Jimmy Butler. Yes, Grant Williams, completely out of character, for whatever reason, got in Jimmy Butler's face, and the result was that Miami was given new life. Jimmy, with fire in his soul, immediately took it at Grant and scored an N1, and the Heat collectively demolished the Celtics down the stretch of Game 2 as Jimmy scored nine total points after this trash talk. For whatever reason, Boston was really feeling themselves this series, as if we look back to Game 1, we find that Al Horford had already started his own beef with Jimmy in the Heat, as in Game 1, Screen by Smart got the ball for the triple. <laughs> Horford also had some very interesting words to say after Jimmy was fouled around the basket. <laughs> By the way, shout out Legends for these trash talk moments. Man is an actual legend, I would sub to his channel. In game three though, Jimmy got further revenge on both Al and Grant, as after an N1 on Grant, Jimmy did this. It's Butler, driving right into Grant Williams, got a foul, and, and he's pointing at Grant Williams from the ground. Grant Williams can't believe it. Then after a gave Vincent three up big with a lead that they would seemingly not give up, Jimmy recreated Al Horford's moment in his face. Wildly, the Heat almost choked away this entire story, as while they did go up 3-0 after a game three win, they then lost the next three games in a row. But in game seven, Grant Williams was a shell of himself. In this game seven, Jimmy would finish with 28 points in a Miami win that brought them to the NBA Finals, while Grant shot just one of three with a box score plus minus of minus 19 in a 19 point Celtics loss. Our shortest moment on this list also led us to one of the most memorable shots we have ever seen. As in the 2019 playoffs, both Russell Westbrook and Damian Lillard were looking to secure their legacies and win the first championship of their Hall of Fame careers, and this desire to win made things tense. In game two, Russ and Dame would get into it with the Thunder leading. Lillard all over him. Westbrook on the ground, Curly Neal, and there they are. They have a pass. This possibly led to Russ trying to do too much, as OKC would not only give away their lead in game two, they'd also lose the second half by 20 points as Russ shot just two for seven with five turnovers in the second half alone. As a standalone incident, this would have been no big deal, only in game three, after connecting on a very tough shot, Russ let Dame have it. Back out Westbrook, Westbrook for three. Bam! Ah! 
and the Thunder would take game three, making this a series. However, Russ had added fuel to Damian Lillard's fire. In game four, the Thunder would lose as Russ shot just five for 21. And then in game five, Russ shot 11 for 31, while Dame not only shot 17 for 33 and scored 50 points, but he also made an all time historic shot. Lillard, long range three, and it's good at the buzzer! Damian Lillard, are you kidding me? Paul George would later infamously say that's a bad shot about Dame's buzzer beater, but regardless of the degree of difficulty here, this shot did go in and it did send the Thunder home and ended both Russell Westbrook and Paul George's time in OKC. As the very next season, both were playing on different rosters. It is not too often you could get that level of revenge. This feud between Russ and Dame did seemingly end in that playoff series. Patrick Beverly's hatred of Chris Paul apparently will continue for his entire life. As Pat Bev has been quoted as saying, every time I see Chris Paul, it's smoke. This was certainly true in the 2021 Western Conference Finals, when Patrick Beverly showed he would do anything to win. Before this series, the mood had already been set as Beverly was ejected in a regular season game for elbowing Chris Paul seemingly at random in transition. The escape hatch was there, but he couldn't find the finish. And the other way, George down. Foul, Beverly. Then, in the Western Conference Finals, Pat undercut Paul on a three. Back up to nine. Oh, Chris Paul goes down hard on his back as Beverly's whistled for the foul. Beverly laughing and mocking Paul. He tried to get into Devin Booker's face, but Book was having none of it. The official's first call, but of course, they're going to go check it now. And Beverly also blindsided DeAndre Aiden in the back. Paul still alive. Knocked loose, picked up by Kennard, lost it there. And a foul from behind as Beverly knocks down DeAndre Ayton. And that'll be a flagrant. At first, these tactics seemed to work as after sitting games one and two, Paul would shoot just five for 19 in game three and six for 22 in game four. However, Chris Paul got the ultimate revenge as at the age of 36, Paul tapped back into his prime during an elimination game six and scored 41 points on 16 of 24 shooting in a game six series ending win for the Suns. Beverly's response after getting humiliated was to do this. That's as unsportsmanlike as it gets. Patrick Beverly losing control. Beverly just losing control of his emotions. He's been ejected from the game. Call for a technical foul. A Bush League play, no doubt about it. But while the Suns were the heroes of this series, that quickly turned just one year later. As headed into the 2022 playoffs, the Suns were looking for redemption. Phoenix had just lost in the 2021 finals and were the number one seed in the West. It looked like they had a real shot at the championship this season. However, the Suns did not act like they'd been here before. As in game one of the Western Conference semifinals against Luka Doncic and the Mavericks, Jay Crowder would be called for a flagrant foul for this. Green has come in for Dallas. Good fake. Crowder trying to get a pass off. Down goes Doncic. And he got hit below the midcourt stripe, as they say. Okay, one play, no big deal. Phoenix would take this win, but then in game two, Crowder continued coming at Luka. They got a 1 0 lead in this series. Booker, champion, driving, scoring on Bullock. Here's the play by Booker, right? A little bit of a shove in the back by Crowder. But still, the Suns won game two, and while Dallas did take games three and four, Phoenix took game five. All they had to do was focus up, and they were headed to the Western Conference Finals. It was in game five, though, where they took things too far. Chris Paul and Devin Booker took every single opportunity they could to mock Luka Doncic, and finally, with the cameras on him, Devin Booker did this. Luca was over. He would leave game five and famously be caught saying, This was a moment straight out of Michael Jordan's playbook, as in game six, facing elimination, Luca scored 33 points with 11 rebounds and eight assists, while Booker shot six for 17 with eight turnovers. The Mavericks would win by 27. Then in game seven, now back in Phoenix, this time Devin Booker shot three for 14 with a box score plus minus of minus 41, while Luca had 35 points, 10 rebounds, and four assists in a 33-point Mavs blowout. In the process of destroying Phoenix, Luka also
also dropped Cam Johnson. An all-time historic revenge game, and there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. By the way, if you are still here, I think you're really going to like either this video about Anthony Edwards and his Michael Jordan connection, or this video on Luka Doncic getting disrespected this very season and getting revenge this very season. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. As always, have an awesome day and peace.